got to a new grace life and thank you worship team it's really special to be here right now um, so as you see uh, on our bulletin we have a, a special thanksgiving celebration service today i'm um, just letting you know that uh, we may go a little longer than usual just because it's that special and we want to give enough time for all the all the participants you're going to see a list of the participants at the back of your bulletin so you can keep track of it as we're going along um, there is a little there is a little typo on the bulletin for today. We will have a communion right before the offertory. So, um, as you can see, the communion table is prepped. Thank you, Lupe Marquez, for, pre for preparing this for us. Um, and so, as you can see, we're going to have Roger Lipros as our first participant to share his gift of, of thanksgiving to Grace Life. But before that, we're going to have a special greeting from one of our members of Grace Life. So we're going to have a short video first, and then Roger, you can come up right after the video. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> hey Grace Life! I miss you guys so much. I think about you all the time. I hope you're having a wonderful time in LA where it's nice and warm because here in New York it's cold. There's the street. <laughs> So for Thanksgiving, I am so grateful for technology because it keeps me connected to everybody while I'm here for grad school. And um, I just can't imagine living in a time without it. I am so grateful for it, so thankful. And I'm really thankful for dollar pizza because uh, otherwise I'd be hungry a lot more often here. <laughs> I miss you. Bye. especially in this Thanksgiving season, that we are walking in the light. So we're going to sing a song today. We're going to sing a song today called I Saw the Light. Some of you heard it when we were practicing. And Anthony has finally agreed to back me up on the bass. It's the first time we played together. It was about a few minutes ago, so... <laughs> We're used to this stuff. Not this stuff. Thank you. 
Hello, friends. Hello, church. It's so good to see you today. And um, when Jillian asked uh, for volunteers to uh, speak about what they're thankful for, I thought, hey, what am I thankful for? And the thing I thought of was friends. And I mean you. You are my friends. And Jesus said in John 15, I call you friends. It's been a long journey. I was thinking back over when I first showed up on the steps of New Life Fellowship, what it was called then, was almost 17 years ago. It's, it's hard to believe so many years have passed. And if I can just take you back to a moment we had an annual camp out on Memorial Day weekend. I'm not sure if that's a tradition you guys may want to keep up or not. But it was at Fraser Park that year. And many of you were there. We were, we were on a Sunday singing worship songs. And uh, the song that just really hit my heart was, it had a chorus that said, um, God will make a way. Pardon me, where there seems to be no way. And uh, I did a lot of weeping back then. And if you see me cry now, it's nothing compared to that. <laughs> because, you know, I was coming out of a 20 year marriage, going through a separation and divorce. And um, I'm happy to say that God did make a way for me. And. Um, I just want to say that it hasn't always been an easy road, but this church has been a great place for both my kids and me to grow up and mature. And as Bertina was saying earlier, that was my one of my thoughts exactly, that because Pastor Burmy encouraged us, he encouraged anyone who wanted to give a testimony and he encouraged the children to also learn to speak up and give testimonies and to uh, share their talents, musical or otherwise, you know, with the church and to serve in the church. So it's been a great church. And you guys have become my friends. And uh, sometimes, you know, offenses happen. I have my quirks. And I'm sure you guys do too. I, I just say this to to warn you, but the, the love that I feel in my heart for you guys is because you've won my heart. <coughs> through, through many, many, many kind words, encouragement, through, through gifts, you know, you guys have given me gifts, you've given me um, um, acts of service, and I know that many times you served even to the point of exhaustion, helping me move, helping me move my daughter, and um, uh, planning my kids' wedding, and cleaning up afterwards, you know? So I, I just say that this church is like a beautiful quilt, um, or for the younger people to understand, like that pair of jeans that says this, uh, you may notice some snubs or imperfections in this garment, but that is part of the beauty of it. It was designed to be that way. And like the quilt, it's, it's made by human hands, not by a machine. So I just wanted to close, you know, um, there's this old camp song that says, make new friends, keep the old. One is silver, the other gold. So we're on a journey now to continue making friends, deepening those old friendships and appreciating those, 
and, and God is also bringing new people and new friendships into our lives. Thank you.
to read all of this. <laughs> I have a lot of things to be uh, thankful for to our Lord Jesus, but today I want to share how death's afflictions, near death accident, have transformed me to a person of courage and joy. I duly thank God for this transformation of myself this 2017, and I am really thankful and blessed that I found our home life. I, our home choose the, the new life fellowship, which is now the Grace Life. I've shared already the first events to the New Life Fellowship four years ago, and I'm, a, I'm gonna share it again now that we united to become Grace Life Fellowship because I want to really belong to you, so I want you to know me more. In 2013, just two years after the death of my mom and my brother, which those th at that time I was still grieving, my daughter Jane Lawrence, who just graduated from nursing in the Philippines, almost died from ruptured gastric viruses, which several doctors at St. Luke's Hospital didn't exactly diagnose the disease. They just transfused blood for 10 days performed four endoscopies to my daughter's fragile body and did a GBO or gastric varices obliteration. It's sort of putting medical glue to the openings in the stomach, the way you put the volcas in the holes of your roof. I asked prayers from several churches that we, my husband and I visited but the, the, my home church, New Life, prayed with me incessantly. Indeed, the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. From James 5, 15, 16. The gastric viruses ran to normal after uh, our conversation with God, as was seen in the fourth endoscopy. And the GBO remained intact until now. In 2014, my husband had a major accident which caused the fingers uh, in, the, in his left hand to be uh, removed or the lot, they, they got lost. So the seven hour operation tried to paste them together, even some pulverized bones. This tragedy made me fully realize how blessed I am to have a loving and prayerful church family as new life. The first person to respond, even before I came, guess what? Who, I mean, were Pastor Burmy and his wife, Millet. Allow, allow me to read this beautiful uh, love note, which my husband and I keep up to now. 2-27-2014, 7.30 p.m. Our dearest Ken, Ramonga. My wife and I came to visit you and pray for you while you are in the operating room. I talked to Eva and also sent a prayer request in your behalf. We want you to know that we care for you and pray for your speedy recovery. We will keep in touch. Love, Remy and Carmen to be there. When Kenny got home from the hospital, it's like a couple came with foods and prayers for us. Pastor Mike Morrison and Chan, Ezer and Maria, Cecilia Walker and Debbie O'Brien, and of course also Pastor Bernie and Millet. A real angel in disguise, so Kenny threw this ordeal in the person of Pastor Bernie. He dropped Kenny to UCLA once a week for the first month, and then once a month until the pins were removed on the seventh month. You're asking where I was? I was on a living job then, and I don't drive. In April last year, my daughter, Jen, the same person who underwent a lot of suffering, suffered again. She almost died when she gave an immediate cesarean delivery to a, to a premature baby, 1.5 pounds at six and a half months preterm. Uh, during this distress, I again implored the prayers of our brethren. This time, I'm more courageous and peaceful. With all the maladies that happened, I learned that worry will not add any single moment to my life. I stayed still knowing that he is God. The 1.5 pounds grew up to five pounds in just three weeks, instead of three months in the incubator. 
As of today, he's a handsome 19 month old toddler who used to call with me every other day, giving me flying kiss with a gesture of give me money for the milk. <laughs> Another procedure will be done to Jenjen by February next year in regard to the prognosis of her hematologist and oncologist. They said she has an autoimmune disease and the liver will endure to live for 10 years more. With all this pain I traversed, I become courageous and hopeful that things will be okay. My battle is not mine anymore. It's God's because I surrendered them all to him. And for us all from Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. service that we have today and asking for volunteers. In our Filipino culture, even we, we know something, we tend to be humble and sometimes it becomes a false humility. And um, I would say that I'm already out from there. That's why you hear me volunteer, so for God's glory. And also I want to let you know that my talent in music or piano was the talent that was developed by my family, my parents, all of us six siblings, we know how to play music instruments, violin and everything like drums and everything, also um, <clears throat> other stuff, but singing was not the cup of tea from our <laughs> siblings, but our dad was a singer in the church He's a baritone and a tenor. Baritone and a tenor, yes, he, he was. So uh, he was a singing lawyer. Now, my mom <clears throat> wanted me to be a uh, somebody like uh, a nurse, but I didn't want to be a nurse. In high school, I was a school pianist, and I hate so much playing the piano for the school choir. Even President Marcos visited our town, I was the pianist. And all graduating students and every occasion, I'm away from my friends because they do PE while I did my um, piano rehearsals and lessons from the sisters in the convent. So I was alone in the convent and it even encouraged me to become a nun. So I wanted to be a nun. <laughs> But then my parents didn't like it because all my brothers wanted to be a priest. Four of my brothers. But none of us did. But we are all like godly and religious and so. So then, uh, cut the long story short, I hated to be a teacher. And um, why? Because uh, when the dean of the music in the uh, university came to our town, they're offering me a scholarship in conservatory music. And I said, no, I don't want to be a teacher. And then so I talked to God. I put uh, several, like a raffle, I put uh, several careers in a piece of paper and I put it in a jar. <laughs> I have not, yeah, I grew up in a Catholic school and all of my siblings. And so I put this in there. I wanted to be a doctor, Ooh, nice title. My dad is a lawyer. I don't want to be a lawyer, but I put it in. <laughs> but we we read a comics like uh, James Bond, and that's Belia 009. Oh, I want to be like that. I want to help people. I want to solve crime and stuff like that. And then, um, but I want to be a doctor. My older 
brother, the oldest brother of mine was the first and I'm second. We were born in the same birthdays. He wanted to be a priest, I wanted to be a nun. He wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be a doctor. But then, my mom said no, because girls, they get married before they even finish their studies. So I said, I don't want to be a teacher. So I put teacher also in the jar. Tell you what, I raffle, I, I uh, shake, 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 and then I put my hand and I pray. Oh, by the way, excuse me, please. During the time, because I was in the Catholic school, I pray more to Mama Mary. <laughs> So I put my hand in there. I said, God, please help me. Mama Mary, help me. Whatever I pick from this, then I, that's the course I will take in college. And I got teacher. I said, oh my God. Oh, please give me another chance. Give me another chance. Shake, shake, shake. And I pick again. Teacher. Oh my Lord. I don't want to be a teacher. Three times, four times, it was teacher. But because I wanted to be a doctor, my mom said, okay, you want to be a doctor, take a science course so that when you get married and you didn't finish the medicine, at least you finish the course. So I took chemistry. <coughs> when I took chemistry and I graduated, I went to Africa to be a teacher. And from Africa, where I was a teacher in Nigeria, we were able to, uh, I mean, uh, I was able to get out of the country during that time because of a teacher because I was a teacher. And when we went back to the Philippines, and then we came here to America, my husband said he was here first, but we came on tour here, because when we were working in, in uh, Nigeria, we are uh, given a chance to, to uh, go abroad and get some visas and stuff like that, you know. And tell you what, our status here in America was because of me being a teacher. So I was sponsored as a teacher. Glory to God. We can roam around the bush, but whatever you wanted you to be, you're gonna be. <laughs> hey, don't expect a Celine Dion here. I'm trying just to give God the glory. And let me share to you this. Bring back everyone who belongs to me. I created them to bring glory to me. Isaiah 43. Join me if you know the lyrics and worship with me.
Hello. Good afternoon. Happy Thanksgiving. So um, she, Jillian, asked for volunteers for people to give um, a little testimony of what God has done for them or things that they're thankful for. And so I'm going to give you guys a little tiny piece of my story and something that I'm very, very, very thankful for and probably the thing that I love most in this world <laughs> besides, you know, God and all of that. <laughs> um, so growing up as a little girl, the only thing I ever really wanted was a sweet man to be my husband. And I didn't care about a house or, you know, clothes, all the things that little girls are into. I didn't care about any, I didn't care about a car, house, you know, just give me a sweet, loving man. That's all I want. And um, I, you know, had several guys that, you know, I didn't really, didn't really turn out to be what I wanted. <laughs> and I came around to the point where I was ready to accept that maybe that wasn't what God had for me. Maybe he wanted me to just serve him and, you know, not be with a man. So I, I accepted that and I was very happy to just be God's girl and just live my life for him, just myself. And um, long story short, I did meet someone. Um, he, I was married before. He wasn't, um, he was very abusive and, um, um, a lot of people told me, you know, you should go ahead and leave. Do you want to be miserable for the rest of your life? You know, he's, you know, do you want to die? You know, you want to just keep on going through this? But the church I was attending encouraged me to stay and that God does not allow for women to divorce their husbands or to leave, even in a situation of abuse. And I wanted with all of my heart to glorify and honor God above everything else and so I told the Lord if this is what you have for me then I trust you and I'm going to stick with whatever it is that you call me to and if if that's for me to be gospel to him to show forgiveness and mercy and for you know patience and all of those things to him while he was doing what he was doing that was you know what I accepted that was my purpose in this life was to be that if it ended up being my life, I was okay with that because I felt like the Lord was telling me, you know, um, Jesus gave his life to save someone. You should be willing to give your life, you know, for someone else to be able to see the true gospel uh, lived out in front of them. Um, so it was very painful, as you guys can probably imagine. And um, there were so many times I basically hit my limit where it took everything in me to stay and to be faithful to the Lord and to forgive and to show grace, to show mercy um, in the face of all of the pain. And, um, you know, I would beg God to please set me free and take me to heaven or just get me out of this somehow because of how painful it was. And, um, but I stayed faithful. We were separated for over two years, and I just kept trying to be faithful, kept trying to serve the Lord, kept trying to be the wife that he called me to be in spite of whatever he was doing to just fulfill my role as a wife, as a godly wife. And um, so I stayed in spite of what everybody kept telling me, like, you're crazy, why are you still here, what's wrong with you, you've got to be insane, like, if this is what God calls me to, so be it. Um, so my testimony and the thing that I'm thankful for is I was faithful to the Lord and God saw that and honored me in my faith and gave me what I always wanted was a patient, loving, kind, gentle husband, um, the kind of man that I've always wanted and prayed for. So that's what I'm most thankful for in this life and uh, we are nearing our one year anniversary so I thought it would be an appropriate time to give that thanks.
dishes, washing rugs, and scrubbing floors, I would steal away a while and walk right out the door. I have a favorite place to go, beneath the clear blue sky, where I can breathe and clean fresh air as soft winds pass me by. I thank God for this peaceful place and for his love for me and for the task that I must do for my precious family. Then I put myself back on the path again, where so often I have trod and go back to the task at hand, I took time out with God. It's Autumn by Judy Young. I saw the trees in Guadaray upon a grand November day turn out to show their colors gay the cotton woods, both young and old, have dressed themselves in gowns of gold, with scarlet lace upon each fold. They stately pine and forest green, content to be the forest queen, looks upon the gorgeous scene, with every tint and shade and hue, an overall breathtaking view, with purple haze and sparkling dew. If I owned not a plot of land, and there were others in command, I'll still be rich for, from where I stand. And if the earth was bought and sold, by those who want was only gold. I will still have both untold because it's all. Thanksgiving 2017 by Judy Young. We've got the turkey and the dressing. We've got the pumpkin pie. Now it's time to thank our Lord and hear some reasons why. When our families get together on Thanksgiving Day, we will thank him for his blessings and we'll all hold hands and pray. We will thank him for his love and thank him for each other, for we are all his children. We are his sisters and we're brothers. We can share our love and share our joy in oh so many ways. And if we live a life full of love, we'll have Thanksgiving every day. Psalm 100, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God, it is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Thank you.
Shout with joy to the Lord, O earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, sing him with joy. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. <laughs> Go into his courts with praise, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Give thanks to the God of gods. To the Lord of lords. He made us, and we are his. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillfully, who placed the earth on the water, who made the heavenly light, the sun to rule the day, and the moon and stars to rule the night. His, His faithful, faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles, who parted the Red Sea, who led his people through the wilderness, who saves us from our enemies, who gives food to every living thing, who remembered our utter weakness, who gave his only begotten son. His, his faithful, faithful love endures forever. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered me by setting me free. The Lord is with me, so I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me, he is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I will not die, but I will live to proclaim what the Lord has done. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. O oh Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. I will give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises. When I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me the strength I need. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I will give thanks to your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness because your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. His faithful love endures forever. We thank you, Lord. scripture that his love endures forever and one thing that was found all in common in all of these sharings of our participants is that God is glorified and it's all for his glory so I want to thank all of our participants for, for coming up here and sharing your 
your, your sharings of Thanksgiving. What, a scriptural background of one of the reasons why I wanted to do this kind of a setup for our celebration service is that because Paul tells us, or was telling to the Romans, that we all have a role to play in the body of Christ. In Romans 12, verses 3 to 8, he says that each of us has a gift. And so Paul says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many, many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we who are many form one body also. And each member belongs to all the others. You belong to me, and I belong to you. We have different gifts, as you've seen today, according to the grace that God has given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, for example, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. And if, if it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. So we all have a significant role to play in this epic story that God is leaving in each of our lives. And it's coming together as one. As Gian Pomana read Psalm 100, verse 5, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. We heard that in our reader's theater. His faithfulness continues through all generations through all seasons of life, as we heard in Judy Young's poems. God's love never fails. And even though we may go through storms in life that may cause us to look differently at God, His love never changes. His love is never tainted by, by the darkness in our hearts and the darkness in our world. I'd like to read from Psalm 103, verses 6 to 19. I want to read it a little bit differently. Because we're not only thankful to God for the gifts that he's given each of us, the gifts that because each of us are different parts of the body, we all have a significant uh, part to play. Yes, we're thankful to God for that. But we're also thankful to God for who he is. And what is God? Or who is God? He's love. And this is one of the ways that David describes love. Psalm 103, starting at verse 6. We thank God because the Lord's works the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Verse 7. We thank God because he made his his ways known to Mo Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. We thank God because the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Verse 9. We thank God because he will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Verse 11, we thank God because for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed his trans our transgressions from us. Verse 13, as a father has compassion on his children, we thank God because so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. We thank God because from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and love him. His righteousness is with our children's children. Even when we are all gone, yesterday, Pastor Burmy was telling us that 100 years from now, it's going to be a completely different world. New people, our great-grandchildren will be living here in this world, and yet God's love will still be here with our people. So we thank God because with those, he keeps his covenant with those and remembers to obey his precepts. 
Verse 19, we thank God because the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. And as I was reading verse 19, I was thinking, we have a lot of kingdoms in this world, kingdoms throughout human history, but all of them have fallen. And so what kind of kingdom are we looking forward to? What kind of kingdom are we living in right now through the church, through God's people? And I couldn't help but think of the fruits of the Spirit. This kingdom is a kingdom of love, a kingdom of joy, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of that are fruits of the Holy Spirit, attributes of the God that we know as love. And I think we should keep that in mind as we think of what we are thankful to God for, for who he is. And let's keep that in mind as we go through the communion together. Amen? Amen. Amen.